Good evening YouTubers, um, hope you're all well. Just doing a short video this evening. Um, I've been looking through some of my uh, model engineer magazines. Um, there's a significant number which uh, were in boxes and uh, stored on shelves which I'd never actually gotten around to looking at. And therefore I didn't have them on my little um, spreadsheet. Um, I'm basically compiling a spreadsheet of all the oops, all the issues I've got. Um, in the region of about a thousand currently. I've got the issue number, the volume number, uh, the date it was issued and the month it was issued. I think C is the day, and but they're basically all on a Thursday or a Tuesday, one or the other. Um, on this there, did I miss? Ah, yeah, yeah. They're all they're all issued on a Thursday, so that that field is actually sur surplus, 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 surplus. There, <laughs> spit it, Paul. Surplus, surplus. Oh, Jesus. My vocabulary, yeah. Subfluous. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, I've got a mouthful of marbles this evening, eh? So I can't sp sp speak correctly. I know I haven't been drinking. Um, <laughs> fucking maybe that's what's wrong. So, um, yeah, so I've got the dates there and then the month and the year of issue, followed by a comment regarding specific articles that are of interest. So, you know, there's all sorts of things here. Now, you'll notice here in April, 3rd of April 1952, we've got a lever fed or lever feed tailstock. Now, that was back in 1952. Now here in, I don't know if the magazine will pick, the camera will pick this up, but that's the 13th and 31st of January 1985, we have a, well it's, I think it's slightly different actually now that I mention it, but a multi-stop tailstock attachment for the ML7 with a picture of the completed article there. Now for those that are wondering what this is for, it's quite simple really. It's just a little adjustable threads, a bit so threaded bar with a hex head on them. So you can screw them in and out with your spanner. And there's a nut usually on the back side of the looks of it. <coughs> So you can lock them at specific distances. Now this uh, little arm here with the handle on it, I'm assuming that that can notch round to different positions in line with each of these hex heads on this um, bracket here. Now then when you use this um, larger lever to push the tailstock forward, this small lever interferes and prevents any further travel of the tailstock um, by coming in contact with each of these little stops. Now, it's maybe a little bit over-engineered possibly, but I think it could be very useful, especially when you see the next picture. If you, if you look over here, we have on the, the end of the tailstock or the I've got I've got the term for the, 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 the barrel or the shaft that runs inside the tailstock but the on the end of that the shaft there you've got a, a multi head um so in this I don't know I don't my camera works very pure but the bottom of this say uh, item is got a MT two taper which is held by the this tailstock here yeah but the top half of it actually rotates around. 
And you'll see these holes drilled in the top, eh? They actually hold a variety of different tools. So you'll have a a sort of arrangement of drill bits, centre drills, possibly a reamer, whatever you would be using, um, even a boring board, possibly, um, in here. And you'd have this set up, so if you're doing multiple instances of the same item, you could quickly just rotate that round to whatever drill you're using, centre drill, 10mm, 15mm drill, whatever, and then click this into place and you, you've got the exact depth already set. So you can speed up your work a lot with these two items. Now, the reason I'm doing this wee video is just to show you some of the complexity that's capable, that, you, that, that uh, these little leads are capable of. Um, Uh, now that could be on a, a milling machine by the looks of it, possibly. Or possibly a bench pedestal drill or a bench drill. But another reason I was wanting to show you this magazine was something I'd quite like to have a crack at. I'm getting to towards the point of having all the equipment I need. I've got a, a decent pedestal drill, I've got an ML7, I've got a variety of tooling for it. I've more recently got a <coughs> collet chuck for the for the lathe so I can do milling operations and I've got a little milling table for it. You know, so there's, I can do a, a I've got a four jaw chuck but it needs repairing. Um, you know, one of the, anyway, that's another story. But this is the thing as I'd quite like to have a crack at. I've, I've seen these articles throughout the last uh, couple of volumes, and each article deals with the creation of a specific part of this item. And it's called a Grasshopper Skeleton Clock. Now it was made by, or designed by Miss, Mr. W.R. Smith from the USA. Um, and this is the first picture I've actually seen of the clock. And it's, you know, it's a tidy little arrangement. You've got the sort of clock face here in the front. It's quite small, I don't know if you'll pick that up. But uh, it's an intricate little mechanism. Fairly delicate. But um, it's, it's got the the required complex complexity to perk my interest. As a machinist, I've I've done a lot of different, or fabricated or produced a lot of different components. A lot of them were castings, <coughs> mass produced. I've done some one-off work as well, but in an industrial environment, it's usually heavy and rough and the tolerances aren't particularly great. Even when I was doing aerospace stuff, um, till very fine tolerances, it was proceduralized and you, you're just, you're, you're little more than an automaton, an automaton, automaton, sorry, that's the way to pronounce it, automaton, right? So if any of you have ever watched Fritz Lang's Metropolis, you know what I'm talking about. And while I enjoy machining and fabrication work, I'm sick to death of doing the grunt work. Let's put it that way. I'm tired of it. I'm really, really tired of it. But you've got to make a buck, buck somehow, don't you? So anyway, um, in my spare time, I would really like to be tackling things like this. I've got a, well, you know, one of my um, my problems, if anything, folks, 
is the fact that I'm easily distracted, yeah? I see this in a magazine, and I'm like, oh, I think I'll make that. There's a significant bit of work in doing something like that, even as small as it is. Meanwhile, my 3D printer still isn't finished. So, I've got to try and prioritise and focus on the projects I'm wanting to ad address before... <laughs> What's this? Sheer lunacy. <laughs> the title of this article is in fact the exclamation made by the editor of this model engineer when he saw this machine running at a recent exhibition. <laughs> I have called it a what you may call it, but it might equally have been a thingy a made bob or even a contemporary in contemporary parlance a thingy. These machines are only found in small sizes. They serve no useful purpose other than the gratification of those from 8 to 80 years of age who just like to watch the wheels go round. <laughs> so, uh, somebody put somebody had more time on their hands than they had too much time on their hands, put it that way. Eh? Well, I don't know what that is, but it obviously serves no useful purpose. Uh, anyway... Just look at some of this, eh? Just look at that. The work that's gone into these models. A lot of these are actual working models, you understand. They're not just... You know, if you fired them up, they would actually run. So I, um, I've just spent 12 minutes, I'm not even like halfway through this magazine. Um, these magazines, um, they're a treasure trove of information and knowledge. If, if you want to inspire the, the younger generation, get them to build stuff like this. You know, this is like plans for a train. You know, get them... Endle the workshops, get them involved. Stop telling them to spot well that, 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 all day long. Drill that hole, drill that hole, drill that hole, drill that hole, drill that hole. It's fucking, that's not engineering. Right, okay. I think I've blathered enough for one night. I hey, hope you found this uh, wee insight into the model engineering world interesting. Um, I've never actually produced any of this standard myself. But um, the more you research this, the more interesting it becomes. There is a lot, a lot of um, knowledge and time and skill put into building some of these models much more than you'd appreciate just by looking at them they're not toys not toys by a long shot the dedication it takes to produce these is uh, phenomenal right that's 14 minutes folks thanks for watching and um, bye for now